Hey guys, Grim here, and this is my guide for Priest in Bless Unleashed. Now, as a short disclaimer, I'm no expert, so everything that's gonna be said, it's my subjective point of view. Also, I don't PvP, so that's gonna be from the PvE perspective. So, we're gonna start up with the skills of the Priest. Skills and combos, because this is where it all starts, which is where the roots of uh, actually um, choosing your blessing lies for me at least so what do we have here let's start with a the combo there are three possible combos well technically four I guess uh, so pay attention to the type of the combo so there are two types of combos it can be holy bolt and they can be smite so this is important because, again, of the blessing we're going to see later. That's just one combo. This is the short combo. You just basically left click, left click, left click, and left click. Now uh, you can see all of them in the showcase. The first three are fast, and second, uh, the fourth is a little bit like delayed but powerful. Then we have the long combo, which is left left and then all right clicks and all of these all of these are holy bolt type except for the last one the very last hit of this uh, long combo is smite and if you check the damage you can see that the the further you go into the combo the more damage it does which means it's not that practical to do like uh, two hits and then cancel your combo and do something else. You want to ideally finish your combo, but of course in real situations you cannot always do that. And then the ensnaring type, it's basically just throwing forward like these lines. It's fa fairly short. It's all smite. And you can also like get the buff. Uh, this champion of light, like you can do right click, right click, and then left click, and you will buff yourself, uh, increasing the damage of all your combos. Now, I personally don't use that because I find that in real situations, you cannot get the, the full benefit of this. Because out of these 20 seconds, um, at least in my loadout, I will do combos like maybe five to seven seconds and it's just not worth it because I'm literally sp spending like three GCDs trying to get this buff. So I don't think this is um, this is viable, at least in my loadout. Again, this is all smite, right? And what I'm gonna say like right away about this combo is just even on big bosses, like big boss models, this is very clunky to use. All these combos, like this short combo and uh, like this long combo, that feels great. Like if your cursor is on the model, like it, it always hits, doesn't matter where the boss goes. This is not the case with the ensnaring combo because you can easily miss. Uh, then your point, like your goal with this is for all of these to hit twice because like go in line your goal is to hit twice but in reality often even if you're not on the uh, max distance they're not gonna hit twice they're gonna hit once so overall damage is gonna be a lot less than on holy bolt combo so overall i tried to use it when i tried the valor um blessing and it just felt really clunky it felt just not right so like i switched it because i just don't like it i like using holy bolt combos these are feel fine these feel great and these are just when you have to be closer you have to like sometimes even like terrain if it's not flat if there are any like variations in terrain it, it will just go whatever i don't know where it goes it just won't hit so overall you can try to use it for yourself most of the time i just feel it like not worth using it 
So again, all of these are holy bolt. Now let's get to the skills. Well, let's check class skills first because this is very easy. Uh, actually, no, let's get to the skills. Forget it. Uh, so the skills, let's see, we have Holy Flame, that's Smite. Uh, your skills also have, they have three types. Um, the Sentinel type, uh, it's your healing skills. You have healing sphere and you have a healing wave. These are Sentinel, so that's basically healing. Then you have Concise, uh, Consigned to Darkness which is basically you place in an A on the ground. And as you can see, the type is an A. The problem with this skill I find is mostly useless because first of all, this is like the lengthy dot that is on the ground. And if uh, mobs gonna come out of this, you're not doing any damage. On top of that, the damage of this skill is like very low and since the type is an A, so there's no type for this, it, it's not being affected by any blessing. So I suggest just forget the skill, like don't put any points into this, it doesn't get better with levels. It's just, just forget it, honestly. So next we have Holy Flame, Divine Strike uh, and uh, Blades of Contrition. These are three smite skills uh, that can be used together. All of these hit, hit very hard, especially like Divine Strike. Divine Strike is the hardest hitting skill uh, in Priest. The only downside is fairly lengthy cooldown at level 1. It's 40 seconds, obviously, as you level it up to level, to level 30, it's going to be less. Uh, but we'll come to that when we look at the blessings. Uh, then you have two Holy Bolt abilities. First one is Judgment. Uh, that basically your mark, that's your healing mark. You apply the mark and whoever's hitting the target is being healed. Uh, it starts with 1%. Then on level 10, it's an, it increases to 1.5%. And at level 20, it increases uh, to 2% and then um, it's supposed I, I suppose it increases to 2.5% at level 30 but it's gonna be very expensive to level it up and then there's retribution which is like your main uh, damage skill if you play in the wolf like I do uh, basically you just hit with retribution um, it it does decent damage it's a multi-target skill so again number of uh, targets go up as you level it uh, and in the wolf, it's your main damage skill. Then you have uh, Escape the Wicked, which is like a reversed blink. Uh, this is mainly used in PvP. It doesn't, it's not worth uh, like uh, having this one slot occupied with this ability. So there we have it. This is the full priest's kit. You have two heals, you have three good damage dealing abilities. You have um, two abilities that are like Holy Bolt. Well, I guess Retribution also a good damage dealing ability. So that would be four. You have the Mark. And of course, last but not least, you have the Sacred Ground. The Sacred Ground is like the Priest's uh, ability that Priest is known for. It increases the AP of whoever is standing in your circle. Uh, you place the circle for 40 seconds, but before they run out, you can replace it. Uh, when you start, it only gives plus 10% AP for whoever is standing in it, which doesn't look like much, right? But when you level it up, every five levels, it adds 5% more. So at level five, it gives you 15% AP. At level 10, it gives you 20% AP for everybody. And uh, I guess if you level it even further, I'm not sure if it goes up higher than level 10, because as you can see, the price of this, uh, the skill points price on, on it 
is absolutely ridiculous. So I don't know. I'm I'm using the one gear piece to get it to level ten for to give me additional five percent. Uh, because if I try to level it up myself, from level 8 to level 9 it costs almost 400 SP and from level 9 to 10 I think it's around that 1000 SP. So price is absolutely ridiculous and you're not gonna level it past 10 anyway. But at level 10 it gives plus 20% your circle, sacred ground gives plus 20% AP. Now let's get to class skills which yeah so uh, again for the people who are not familiar with the priest basically all of these abilities they build up your whole energy like as you can see it says generates 170 holy energy your full bar is a thousand holy energy and your class skills they consume holy energy like shield of faith for example consumes 450 uh, holy energy and if we look at blade of justice this is the full bar this is a thousand holy energy so what's good here what you should be using i'm always using shield of faith because this is honestly op for uh well if you're talking about the dungeons right if we talk about party content this is op because coupled with this passive that gives you two additional attack blocks you have a shield that gives you like three charges you can take three hits without uh, being af being affected um, so it's not only saving saving you and your allies in a lot of cases this actually stops periodic damage or this um, won't like knock you you know if there are like some abilities that knocks you uh, or like throw you somewhere if you're shielded in this time you might not get knocked like it depends on the ability some abilities like still go through the shield and you get the knockback but you don't take the damage but some abilities you won't even be knocked you won't even be knocked so shields are just op if you're playing support priest that's what should you that's what you should be uh, doing uh, there are some bosses also where there is like a uh, damage dealing phase we just drop the circle on the ground you give everybody the shield and everybody just go just go with the damage do a huge damage to the bot without worrying if somebody something will hit them you know because if something will hit them they're gonna die the shield will absorb that so anything apart from like one shot mechanics that's supposed to one shot you in any case shield will absorb so this is huge this is the most OP thing in in the priest like forget everything else if you have one thing to have priest for it's the shield so what else do we have here we have blade of justice that in my opinion it doesn't do enough damage to actually justify using it even if you if you are in the valor and you're trying to maximize your damage well i guess i suppose if you don't need a shield yeah you can use it um because in in the valor uh you have some perks to uh, to you know improve blade of justice damage but other than that i think um it's not worth you then then we have like a different forms i think uh, these are mostly again for pvp because in pve uh, i don't feel like uh these are good you know this uh, healing nova uh, and healing storm that is uh, you know affecting the uh, healing nova i think it's it's useless it uh, costs the full bar it uh, you cast it like a very long time it, it makes everybody up but that's like in real situations that's not needed most of the time and uh, i will actually explain 
later why why i think all of this like healing like priest is not about the healing not about holy nova not about healing wave not about uh, you know whatever this uh, calls healing sphere like that's secondary but most people people who start playing the priest they think that oh i should just heal people you know my uh, my goal is to heal people this is not how it works in blast at least not how i perceive it so then you have furious forms and guardian forms which again like i don't think these are worth it you can try to play with this i've seen people playing with those for like for the healing for the most part again just to quickly heal your uh allies uh the damage if if you go to like the furious form the damage is not enough to justify using that so i mean you can try you can try using those but i feel like these are basically just take the shield if you're playing in party if there if there is a damage and there's always damage right so just take the shield, play with the shield because this is OP. Uh, in the open world, yeah, I mean, you can take everything. You can take blade, you can take the forms, it doesn't matter. Like I'm basically focused on the dungeons. I mean, this whole video is basically about the load up, loadout uh, of the dungeon priest. On the class passive, obviously you level everything like level the damage first and then the survivability uh, some people still don't know that you can actually activate your you know how to get your class level i'm gonna make a separate video on that because it's still not in the main quest line so people skip it and they don't know that it exists but these are basically just passive stats So that's it. So my general setup uh, for the dungeons. Well, okay, I think I'm jumping. Let's get into the blessings. So there are four blessings uh, that uh, have their own like unique, I suppose, uh, play style and the passives associated with that. The valor is on paper the biggest well, i guess even not on paper but just in real situations is the biggest dps so you have this passive trance that gives you a lot uh critical hit rate when you stack it when you go further it's even more of course uh, then you have the ability to charge divine strikes two times uh, you have passive that um, increases the damage of your uh, blades of justice and you also have the fury which increases the attack power of smite types and combos uh, and critical uh, hit rate of those so if you take this and you stack a lot of crit damage like you your priest is gonna hit very hard the two problems i have with this is then because you have three smite abilities so what you want to be using you want to be using divine strike obviously then holy flame and uh, blades of contrition so three abilities and the way it works when you divine strike creates it will uh, it will um, mitigate i'm sorry not mitigate but basically the cooldown of your holy flame i forgot the word sorry and your blades of contrition uh almost it's going to be nullified once you get to the uh yellow um yellow blessings basically when your divine strike creates your holy flame and your blades of contrition will be available right away so it works best with those three skills and with those three skills you only, you only have one slot 
for uh, for your other ability and since if you're the only priest in party you kind of have to have the judgment and in general judgment is a must have like keep it up at all times on the boss because this is the main source of healing if people do enough damage they heal up very fast so running around trying to like heal people it's a lot better keep the mark on the boss everybody heals from attacking the boss and if they need uh, like emergency healing they just pop the potion the hp potion and they are fine and if they're not near death they just heal through the mark when you know especially when you know fight uh, you know good enough you know what abilities comes next I'm still running healing sphere because there's like the four slot which I can be running anything. I can, it's still okay to put it and somebody from time to time just eats it and heals heals up. But going back to the valor, that was a little rant. Going back to the valor, you only have one slot left. So I suggest using judgment there. So your your basic loadout with the judgment and three smite skills. The problem I see with Valor comes from combos. Because the combos that I want to use, they are holy bolt. So which means they're not going to be affected. They're not going to be affected uh, by the passive, by this fury passive. And this passive uh, goes to around a th uh, 100%. So it two times it's going to affect plus 100% damage to the uh, skills and uh, combos. So if I use that combo, it doesn't do any damage. If I use this combo, this is very clunky. And again, I'm not doing enough damage. So when all your three skills are going to be on cooldown, this is where like your damage drops significantly in Valor spec. Uh, another issue I have with this, like this is pretty, like this basically forces you to play with a Blade of Justice or it's a useless trait. It's one or the other. And um, the other issue I have that it, it doesn't give your group any survivability or to you for that matter like you are not more durable you cannot take more damage like th there is nothing here that gives you any survivability so let's jump i'm gonna leave the wolf to the last part and just go through the others really really quick so the line the line is focused on your uh, mark on your judgment it's basically what you have here, uh, it increases the number of charger, charges of the Holy Flame uh, and it, it also prolongs the duration of Judgment when you hit with Holy Flame. It doesn't matter too much because your Judgment is basically have like in real situations going to have like 90% uptime. So this is, it's fine but it's not that not that important um, this is uh, this effect in, in general this is uh, made for like the mark and to get more spheres as you can see the passive gear they just spawn they're gonna be spawning when you attack the boss which is under the mark you're gonna be spawning uh, two healing spheres near you. Now the first issue with that is you don't often need those spheres. Like people not just running around the battlefield just picking this up constantly. Again, we're talking about the PVE. In most cases, you don't need that, especially if everybody's shielded. People usually, uh, people usually are on the max HP. So most of those, they go to waste. And the second part is these are not full 
healing spheres. This is like small healing spheres. They heal for like one third of what the normal one does. Then you have uh, this stuff that increases attack speed again. And th the last one, the executioner, reduces the cooldown of smite skills and critical hit damage. Again, uh, if you're using that, it's like... Again, your combos not gonna get affected by that. Well, obviously combos are not affected by this skill. Uh, but still, like the cooldown of smite skills, your main smite uh, skill in this case is gonna be Holy Flame. If you plan to keep the Judgment and the Sacred Ground. Uh, so there goes your three slots. And for the last slots, you can get rid of Healing Sphere and just spawn them when you attack the boss. But again, there are some situations where you just need to pop your healing sphere uh, for somebody. And yeah, I guess you can use like divine strike, but it's not going to be affected by your blessing in any way. Uh, apart from lowered cooldown. But like damage going to be like cluster. So again, this is yeah it's not very good the line heart is not very good it's just it's just healing sphere spawning machine that that's what it is it doesn't have any other like significant benefits then the crescent moon and this is similar to the lion except for the part that it's based around the healing wave and before we get into that the healing wave is not that convenient to use man it's like it doesn't go very far it's relatively narrow and when people run around as chickens without as a headless chickens like it's very hard and sometimes frustrating to try to heal people and like yeah when everybody's standing in one place it's cool you get your healing wave either and everybody's hp goes goes up and by the way it heals less than the sphere but in real situations people like run around with like 20 percent hp and trying to heal them and you just cannot hit them because like they constantly moving like that's frustrating by itself but now let's let's check what we have here so we have two stacks at the beginning two stacks of healing wave uh, and you have various buffs based on healing wave. So when you're doing damage, your heal of your healing wave goes up. When you use the healing wave, uh, like your other stuff goes up. The divine strike increases its damage. But then again, uh, your slots gonna be occupied mostly by support abilities from on the damage perspective you're gonna have divine strike and maybe the second one maybe the second one uh, as you can see the warrior gives a uh, buff to again smite type combos defense penetration is like meh it's the way it works in pve it really doesn't uh, doesn't add you a lot of damage it's like it's negligible I better have any other stat here, like critical, anything, man, anything, just cooldown reduction. But this de defense penetration, like for what? For your divine strike? Like, that's fine. Again, you, you do your divine strike and you're done. You don't have any, any damage and this affects your ensnaring combo, which sucks again and it doesn't do anything for this good combo right so this is w where the wolf comes in as you can see all of these are um, level to the point of yellow blessings so what's so good about the wolf why so uh why a lot of people play with the wolf and why they've been nerfing it actually it's been nerfed uh, I think two times already and they think about nerfing it the 
uh, third time. It's unclear. Well, they might not be nerfing it straight up, but they they were uh, writing about nerfing this, or like reworking protection and sacrifice. But even without protection and sacrifice, uh, right now I I will not say that this is OP. I will not say it was OP in the beginning, when under this effect you would still get the holy energy. That was a P. Like you could just spam your shields and spam any abilities you would like at any point. Now we cannot do that. You have to be you know more thoughtful about this. But now let's get let's get to it. First life force. Uh this is great. This is basically gives you like plus 25% power at almost all times because uh, you will not be um, below 50% a lot a lot of times you can just pop the potion or last 10 will you know very quickly heal you up or the mark like it's basically all your AP on your gear is going to be affected by this so you have if you have 10 10k attack power on your gear you're going to be having 12.5k 12, 12 when you have uh, Wolf activated, basically at all times. So this is already a huge boost to everything. It's a huge boost to everything, regardless of what you're using, like what skills you're using. AP affects everything, so that's already great. Then we have Protection and Sacrifice, which again is you need to get used to this because what it is now like forget this it starts at the beginning like it's very expensive on your health but when you get to this point even nine percent i i don't feel it i don't feel it because there is a mark on the boss and even if I, if i throw one judgment at the boss i instantly get my hp back so when you get to this point like the fact that it costs your HP, uh, it's nothing. It's the main point of it is that it disables holy energy, but you will be able to like recast your abilities, spam your abilities. For example, you need to spam a bunch of healing orbs. So you activate the shields and you can spam like five healing orbs if you have to, or uh, you can spam the retribution is great, like this is great, but cooldown is fairly lengthy and the way I'm playing, there's not much else to do the damage, right? If I, if I just use retribution, there is nothing else for me uh, to do the damage with, apart from the combos. However, if I pop the shield, I can cast retribution, uh, if I don't take any downtime, it's gonna be like four times in a row. You can cast Retribution, just spam it and does significant damage. Uh, same with the mark, if you need to mark several targets or just uh, update it uh, sooner. So basically overall this is, this is great. The last stand, the last stand. Um, it, it comes again. To sum it up before like we go into this, the wolf, apart from giving you a lot of damage, it, it gives you so much survivability. It's insane. Like all the other blessings, they don't give you any survivability really. It's just healing, you know, just increasing your output, but no survivability. In wolf, you have two survivability talents. Just to have last stand, which is activated. Uh, at first, it's not very useful because the threshold, I think, is like 15%. When you get to yellow territory, it's 35%. So below 35%, it gets activated. If it's not on cooldown, the cooldown is 90 seconds. So it gets activated, and for 20 seconds, right now, you can, you know, increase it even further. Uh, you're basically running around with with insane speed and getting constantly healed. So when you draw when your health drop below 35, 
you start running really fast you get killed uh, very fast as well so that's very good and then we have the bolt this is the passive of this all of the blessings have passive to increase your damage but let's see how it goes and synergizes with everything first of all you get a good amount of hp so you're already durable but you're gonna be like fat and durable like it's very it's very hard to die as a priest in the wolf like it, it really is it really hard to die unless you get the one shot by some ability that uh, hits you for 30k because the amount of hp and if you like level it up to max to like level 20 that will give you like 8k hp on top of yours that's a lot and plus a hundred percent damage for your holy bolt combos and skills and this affects everything that i'm using like basically it affects this combo that i'm using this combo that i'm using apart from the last strike which is fine again all of these get affected it affects judgment so judgment hits harder it's not a big damage but it's still a little bit and it affects retribution so all this my setup works like perfectly the synergy is great so everything that needs to be buffed is buffed um, now the ap also helps for the healing sphere uh, because I feel like you don't need to level heal and sphere too much because like at level 10 it already heals like all my HP basically it heals for like 15k when I have all my AP up I have panacea uh, you know I have elixir when everything up I have huge amount of AP it doesn't crit, but it doesn't have to crit, right? So having it at level 10 for extra reduced um, for extra reduced um, cooldown, I think is fine. If, if you feel like it's not enough, you can level it up to like 15. So that's all about blessings. I'm a huge huge proponent of you know playing in the wolf and i think also if you pvp you would also get the wolf simply because of survivability priest is already like very annoying in pvp and when you combine these these two abilities like ugh, man like killing priest is gonna be a problem but let's move on So the next part would be, what do you need to level with your skill points? Obviously getting as many skill points as possible, so doing your originals uh, should be your main goal. But what should you be leveling? So ideally for dungeons, you want your sacred ground uh, to be at level 10. If you don't have to too many points you can leave it at five like five is fine it really is to, to start crippling in costs up to like level six and up so before that it's fairly cheap then obviously you want to level what you use ideally have judgment at level 20 get it to level 10 like asap when you start running the dungeons because like one and a half percent is a lot better than one percent obviously then retribution is your main damage source so and your like main tool uh, to kill mobs fast when you run uh, the originals because this way you can just run past the mobs aggro like 10 mobs start casting detribution and it, it does six ticks at level 25 it affects i think even at level 20 it already affects four targets so you're doing six ticks on four targets 
and you should have if the mobs are minus seven of your level you should have enough damage to kill 10 mobs with one retribution so that's your main source of the uh, main source of damage uh, you can also when you're running uh, regional solo if you do that so uh, replace judgment with divine strike divine strike is also incredibly good aoe instrument but you always obviously you need to level it up in this case at least do it to like level 10 or 15. in general all the damage dealing abilities are fairly uh, fairly not expensive they're fairly cheap in sp uh, healing abilities are slightly more expensive then you have the mark that even more expensive and then you have the sacred ground that is absolutely ridiculous but we can sort of save some uh, skill points with one piece of gear that I'm going to show you. So I think we're done with the skills and combos and blessings. So the general setup basically looks like this. Uh, for the union, if you're running, again, if you're running dungeons, if you're that's main, main goal, pick sentinels, obviously you get this cool passive where you can like uh, revive uh, press the wrong button like this circle where you you just revive everybody in the circle when they have like level th 2 or level 3 it's very easy it has fairly lengthy cooldown of uh, I think it's one hour yeah 3000 yes it's one hour Okay, now, now let's look at the gear. Where you want to be, where you want to be getting. Uh, as I said already, our main goal is to stack as many AP as possible. Like all the other stats, like crit, unless you play an Enveller. If you if you play Enveller and you have it leveled up, and uh, like you have a lot of uh, crit hit your idea would be getting AP plus crit damage, obviously to maximize your damage. But if you're in, in Wolf um, and building like similar build to mine, uh, crit, crit hit and crit damage doesn't give you that much because it's kind of, you need to go to a certain point for it to matter. It's a lot better to just stack AP. So I'm using staff with the AP, seeker staff. Uh, when S staff shows up with like more AP, I think it can go to like 1.5K maximum stat on the S staff. Uh, I'm gonna swap obviously to S, but for now it's like A staff. I'm gonna be swapping to this one. This one is much better obviously when I get it to plus five. Uh, your secondary weapon, you have a holodom that gives you AP power as well. Then for... Yeah, so the general idea is to get uh, all slots that have AP, since you also have the AP boost. You wanna, you wanna use all slots that have AP. Like you have AP here. I have, for now I have Scryers, but you can get Grand Seers they have up to like 840 i think ap gloves you can also get um, with ap however i'm using the gloves that gives me plus two sacred ground these are very cheap you just need to make sure these are actually plus two because they can be plus one or plus two so if you wanna get your sacred ground to the break point you can buy these and have plus two a level of sacred ground. Uh, waste is, I need to uh, change that as well. Um, jewelry, jewelry accessories. Again, I'm using accessories for the attack power. You need 14 red runes for those. And that's fairly, that's fairly easy to get. 
necklace. I'm using the horde necklace, but that's like a crappy version. Uh, you need to, let's see if there's actually present right now on the marketplace. I think it, it was around five mil the last time I checked it. I haven't bought it yet. No, that's not the one. No, no, no. Where is it? Yes, a necklace of a twisted flower. That's what you're going that's what you want to get. This is from Abyssal Mines of Corruption, I think. So the next time it's in rotation, they're going to show up on the marketplace again. But the last Last prices of this are very discouraging, it's like 8 million plus. But when it's in rotation, you could get it as low as like 2 million on our server at least. So you wanna you wanna get this for even more AP. And so your goal is to get 14 red runes on your gear, which again is fairly easy. Any slots that you can get AP, get AP. If you cannot get AP, uh, I prefer to have one slot with the defense because it gives like, in my, in my current state, it gives around six to seven percent additional damage reduction, which is like nice. Uh, and other slots, like for example, this helm, like I cannot get AP helm, so I'm just using something that gives me any amount of um, of damage so i'm using critical hit damage here uh, so that's basically it for the gear that's how you should approach it stack as many ap as possible and where you cannot stack ap you can get either defense or uh, critical hit damage or critical hit rate so these are not perfect since you don't have much crit, but still it's some damage and defense is uh, always viable as well to, you know, to take less damage. Uh, one note about the HP stuff, since we already have, if you are in, in the wolf, like you already have so much HP that like have an additional 1.5k, for example, from some A gear, it's negligible it's better in terms of taking damage it's better to get an item with the defense it will give you uh, overall more effective hp okay and the last part would be consumables so what what to use in consumables food doesn't uh, give you that much so you can just uh, you can use better to use something that buff your group more so obviously let's let's check shared meals anything that gives like crit damage critical hit rate where is it no no nope then where is it the beef curry for example 24 percent critical hit damage or 4.5 percent critical hit rate tiger ship dumping these are good basically stuff that boosts your group damage because it's not gonna give you much but there's no like good ap food for example it's only like 95 ap which is basically zero the main consumables you should be always using is superior panacea of uh, blades that's 20 percent more attack power and it proceeds through death and for elixir also either elixir of blades for like additional 10 percent but it will drop if you die so you can also use the stuff that i handing out every time the elixir of haste it gives you 10 percent attack speed it's also like on paper this should be this should be more beneficial but um, I don't know it, it just feels like you don't get the full 10% haste on everything since it it you don't have like the GCDs and stuff you just have the attack animations and I feel a slight difference 
I try to like stack 20%, even more than 20, I like stack 21% with the attack speed uh, uh, weapon plus the elixir, but it just doesn't feel like I'm getting the full 20%. I don't know, it's subjective, maybe it does. But I usually use this one because even, even if you die, it still persists, it's just easier to track. So these are your consumables, basically in increasing your AP and attack speed even further. So that that's your general uh, priest for dungeons. Uh, as for as for dungeon footage itself, um, I'm gonna be posting some more videos when the time dungeons change. I already posted the footage for. Uh, the Night Spire and Tropic Descent and for Altar of Blood you can check that Shadow Visions I find like very very boring when you just 90% of the fight you just stand and waiting for the phase so when the time dungeons change I'm gonna be posting new footage but it's pretty I guess it's pretty self-explanatory how this build works you just you just try to shield everybody in the important moments like you you can drop like a healing sphere to heal people when needed from time to time uh, and uh, keep the mark on the boss at all times like so people can heal up on themselves uh, try to place the sacred ground where it's convenient for other people because you're not the main source of damage so try to increase the damage of other party members Retribution is for the damage, and that's it. When you like, you don't have, you can't throw retribution. Just do your standard compass. So that's it for me. If I haven't covered any topics that would like to be covered in the priest, uh, let me know in the comments. I don't know, maybe I forgot something, but that's it for now. Thank you for watching. See you next time.